Okay, so the laptop I normally use to make these videos has been in the shop for the last two weeks, basically. So I'm sorry that this is coming to you a little late. The news cycle moves so quickly that you've probably already forgotten about the fact that Hong Kong even exists, let alone uh, the heady days of August 31st, 2019, when uh, cops were firing tear gas into crowds of peaceful protesters who were protesting a new bill that would allow uh, China to extradite criminals from Hong Kong, uh, placing a lot of Hong Kong citizens and visitors at great risk of the overreaching Chinese authorities. So back on August 31st, uh, Twitter user Patriot Coburn posted a video of a Hong Kong protester, and he wrote, Holy shit, the protesters in Hong Kong are grabbing the canisters of tear gas, dropping it into liquid nitrogen, and turning it into its harmless solid form. Everyone retweeted this. I mean, everyone. I saw this all over my timeline. And why? Because it has everything that... Uh, the SJW science nerds I follow are looking for in a tweet. Uh, it's a cause we can all get behind. It's chemistry. It's human ingenuity when it's most necessary. Unfortunately, there are a few issues. Uh, of course, there are a few issues, or I wouldn't be making a video about it two weeks too late to do anything about this. Uh, here's the first issue. Um, that's not how tear gas or liquid nitrogen work, uh, or reusable water bottles. None of these things work like that together. Uh, someone on Twitter did uh, almost immediately point this out to Patriot Coburn, writing, that is not LN2. They would have lost their hand uh, from the resulting mechanical explosion after capping and shaking that thermos. It was probably just water. That's mostly correct, uh, despite Patriot Coburn's bafflingly stupid reply saying that it, that can't be true because scientists and ice cream parlors use liquid nitrogen. Uh, throwing liquid nitrogen into a water bottle and screwing the cap on tight would basically create a pressure bomb. Uh, you should never ever keep liquid nitrogen in a closed system because the liquid will begin boiling almost immediately um, and pressure will then build up. And if it has nowhere to go with that pressure, then it goes boom. Uh, the last place you want liquid nitrogen is in a sealed bottle that hasn't been specifically built to hold it and vent that pressure. Uh, and if you throw in an active tear gas canister that's pumping out mist, that little pressure bomb will be cooking in no time. So no, it wasn't liquid nitrogen, nor was it vinegar, as another viral tweet claimed. Amazingly, Bernie's Pawforth I don't know, uh, took, that vi took the video from uh, Patriot Coburn and just changed the liquid inside to vinegar with zero evidence, but doubling down on the pseudoscience of it all. Uh, when chemistry graduates are faced with tear gas in Hong Kong, they use chemistry to turn it into solid form by shaking it in vinegar and rendering it useless. That's education for you. Bravo. Yeah, no. Uh, first of all, tear gas isn't actually gas. Uh, it's solids or liquids that have been aerosolized in order to make them easier to spray into people's faces. Uh, so vinegar will not do anything to tear gas. And furthermore, though, it's often used as a home remedy to treat people who have been exposed to tear gas. It's probably not even good for that, considering that it's also an acidic irritant that has been used for similar purposes as mace. Want to know the real way to treat tear gas? Not acids, but antacids like Maalox uh, mixed with water and then sprayed on the affected areas. Uh, safe, effective, done. That's education for you. But I doubt tweeting that will get that information to go viral because actual science sometimes isn't quite as sexy and fun as pseudoscience. Here's another thing that probably won't go viral. Uh, the water bottle in question was just filled with mud. Uh, simple mud stopped the tear gas canister from continuing to operate. Why? Easy. The canisters operate by quickly heating up a powder, that's the solid I was talking about, uh, inside. The powder is neutral to us at room temperature, but hurts us when it's cooked. 
So getting the canister wet prevents that reaction from taking place. And also getting it wet neutralizes the powder, which is why it's equally effective to just pour water on the canisters, which protesters have done in the past. That's also why the treatment for people who are exposed to tear gas is mostly just water. It's still science. It's still human ingenuity, but doesn't quite have that viral bite to it anymore, does it? What's the harm in misinformation like this going viral on Twitter? Well, the worst case scenario is that you send some well-meaning but gullible people out into the streets with pressure bombs. Uh, a less deadly but still bad result is that you convince people that they don't have the right materials to fight these types of brutal police tactics, when in fact they very well might. I say they might because while most people do have access to water, you do need a lot of water to stop a decent sized tear gas canister. And sometimes it's just not logistically possible, depending upon the size of the canister. And here's one final bit of harm that this misinformation can cause. By mindlessly retweeting this pseudoscience, you may be elevating the platform of a Nazi. Yep, that's right. Patriot Coburn is a racist, sexist, anti-choice, conspiracy-mongering, climate-change-denying white supremacist. And if you retweeted him, you gave him a little thumbs up that helped push him up to 900 followers and counting. So this is me finally back to making videos after two very long weeks uh, of screaming at the wall, uh, reminding you that if something sounds too cool to be true, please double check it before you retweet and maybe consider clicking through to see what kind of person you're retweeting while you're at it.